Katrina's Creations. This is episode 124. And no, your eyes are not going crazy. I am wearing the same shirt I wore, I think, last podcast. I seem to always be wearing the shirt lately, um, probably because I like it so much. It's just nice and cozy and comfortable. And yeah, it's my staying at home, going nowhere shirt. So uh, apparently, because I stayed at home and went nowhere other than cleaning the house, I tend to wear this outfit apparently anyway um enough of the uh lack of fashion sense on my on my part <laughs> so uh yeah let's get started right away with um I've totally derailed the podcast and I'm like a minute into it yeah anyway let's get started <laughs> I really thought I was going to have a finished object this week. I thought I was going to have my second basket wave pattern done so I could write the pattern up now that I know everything's okay with it and send it to my test knitters. This close. So close. So far. Uh, let me show you where I am at. I am very happy with how it's turning out. And of course, I'm halfway through the row to be able to show this to you. But... Here it is, and the yarn, as usual, just fell onto the floor. So this is the widest end of it. And this is a light turquoise teal color. It is not the blue that it's showing up. It's not baby blue. It's a definite teal that matches the teal that's in here, just perfect. So there's different patterns. So you can see the first one, and then here's the second one and the third one, and the fourth one, and I am up working on the fifth one. So I just have a little bit of this section to go, and then the final section that looks like this, and it will be finished. So in the next day or two, this will be done, and my granddaughter was actually over here today, and she was like, did you need me to model it for you? And I was like, almost, except that the needles are still dangling in it, because I'm still working on it. Um, but it should be done for next week and the pattern written up. So I will be definitely contacting my test knitters, see if they're still interested. And uh, we'll go from there. This is what the narrow section looks like. And then it goes across to the widest section, which is right over here. So if my lights look a little bright, I never know when I film it right now, they're looking a little on the bright side, but sometimes when I edit, they look fine. If they do seem a little bit bright, it's because it's dark outside. It's Thursday night. I have to work tomorrow, so I know I'm not going to get a chance to film the podcast on Friday. Uh, so every other week when I work Friday, I have to film Thursday night. And I'm filming a little bit later than what I anticipated, just because it's like, kept hoping I get this done. So that's project number one. And like I said, hopefully that will be done and be a finished object for next, next Saturday's podcast. Now the, the galaxy shawl, which is the red and black and gray one that I had started last week. It got no love this week at all. No love whatsoever. Um, I didn't end up at knit night because we had a community meeting um, in the neighborhood where I live. We have a meeting every other month. And I was at that on knit night and I didn't pull it out of the bag because I've been working on all the other projects. And I got a little tied up on doing my doily and didn't really want to put it down. So I never got to that project at all this week. Next, I have the the flax light sweater. And I made a little headway with that this week. Here's where I was last week. I've only done about an inch, which is not that much. However, um, I am going to a meeting on Saturday. When you're watching this, I am sitting in on a seminar that's running all day long. So, um, yeah, this is going with me because it's the one pattern I've got going on right now that I don't have to watch what I'm doing because I'm at the point where I'm just going around and around and around and around. So I don't have to count anything or anything like that. So I can pay attention to what's going on in the meeting and still get something accomplished because I don't know about you, but I can't just sit 
Like I can't just sit and watch TV or something. My hands have to be busy or I fidget. So um, this is going to go with me to keep me occupied and out of trouble. So um, this is the Flax Light sweater that I've been working on. It seems like forever, but it really has been since I believe the beginning of the year. So it's, it will get done eventually. Next, I have um, the scarf that I'm making for Dave. That I have gotten a ways on this week because it went to work with me and it went to another meeting with me. And so I was able to work on it. This is all I have left of the first ball of yarn. So once I finish the first ball of yarn, I will be halfway through the sweater or the scarf because the scarf is the scarf is only, I believe, seven and a quarter inches wide. You're knitting it length width, lengthwise. And as you can see, you can see how far I am right now. Right now it is about three. It's about three inches in width right now. And by the time I finish up this ball of yarn, I'll be close to three and a half inches. So the next uh, skein should take me, by the time I finish, I should be very close to between seven and seven and a quarter inches. This is a linen stitch, and I've mentioned it before. This is the right side, and it looks woven, and this is the wrong side. Um, I am doing a tutorial on this stitch, so if you want to check this out, there will be a tutorial up on Wednesday for this stitch, and it is called the linen stitch. It's very, very easy. Um, it's just slipping stitches. It's knitting, purling, and, and slipping stitches, which means you pretty much take it from one needle and slide it onto the other one. Um, it's very simple, but it gives a really nice effect. Like I said, it looks woven when you finish, and it's very smooth to the touch. Um, and when you've got a yarn like this one that has a little halo to it, it makes it even feel softer. So um, again, there's going to be a tutorial on this on Wednesday. The next project that I'm working on is the Fractal Doily, which we have a doily along going right now. And this is what I am making for the doily along. I'll have some more information about that in just a minute. Here is how far I've gotten. Last week, if you remember, I just had I just had the circle done in the center. But now I have about halfway done one of what they call the veins. This is not your traditional doily. It's not circular. It has these like wings that go out in opposite directions off of the center wheel. So here it is so far. And I took this to a meeting. I took this to my, my HOA meeting, which is a homeowners association meeting. And this is what I worked on. Except in the middle of working on it, some of my neighbors were looking over going, what is it you're making? We like to make doilies. We like doilies, you know, and they were talking on and on, and I was afraid we were going to get shushed, but anyway, we didn't. Um, but this is how far along I am with this, and I'm already excited to start my second one. Um, uh, for being a new crocheter, this pattern is very easy. It is all we, it is all comprised of single crochet, double crochet, and chain stitch. Things I can handle. And I've been, I'm really happy with this so far. I have not had to call for help from any of you. Of course, the patterns are not done yet. Things could change. But right now I'm doing okay. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. So that is my project for the doily along. Now, if you haven't been watching, I'll tell you a little bit about the doily along. It started March 1st and is running until April 30th. You can knit or crochet a doily of your choice. Um, if you want to make the fractal along with us, it is a paid for pattern, but you don't have to. You can make any pattern you would like. And you need to enter it either over on Ravelry in the um, Katrina's Creations group. And the link to that is down below here. If you don't have a Ravelry account, although it's really fun to have one because it's free and there's like tons of patterns that are out there that are free that you can get over on Ravelry. Um, you can also like keep a list of all of the projects you're making and you can look at other people's projects and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's addicting. It's like Pinterest for, for yarn, for yarn people. Pretty much. It's like Pinterest. 
because you could get lost down the rabbit hole over there and um, never come up for air again. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, you can post your, your finished doily over in the Ravelry group, or you can post it over on the Facebook page, which is Katrina Knits, and the link to that is also right down below. And if you post over there, just make sure you tell me it's for the doily along. If I see a doily, I'm going to kind of assume it's for the doily along, but please let me know just in case. And that will get you entered. And the winner of the doily along will be chosen randomly um, based on the number of entries. And the winner will receive a skein of hand spun silk yarn. It is single ply and I spun it myself. And it's roughly 375 yards of lace weight silk yarn. And it's very soft. So um, I think that's everything with the doily along news that I can think of. So now it's time to see what you guys have been making this week. Now, I thought in honor of the doily along, and since I'm finally officially making doilies, I thought I would show you some of the doilies that my grandmother made. Now, some of you who have been with the podcast for a while have seen these before because I have shown them, I think, twice before. Um, but if you're new, and we do have a lot of new viewers, if you're new to the podcast, my grandmother was a crocheter. This, this would be my father's mother. She was a crocheter, and she crocheted um, lots of afghans, and I mean, there's afghans all over her house, and she crocheted little doilies, and they were like on the backs of the, the heads of the, like where your head would rest, they were on the backs of the chairs, and they were on the arms of the chairs. Um, she was, uh, and she would crochet different ones for us for Christmas. Um, I also remember when I was a kid that she had crocheted some little stuffed animals. I remember a, I believe it was a teddy bear and an elephant. I think it was an elephant. I just remember they were always in the toy box. And she would actually, instead of using starch on her doilies, she used a sugar water mix. And then she would pin them out on her carpet. You would go over to her house and they'd be, all the doilies would be laid out on the carpet and pinned in place. So she used them as a giant blocking board. So I thought I would show you a couple of hers. There's this, this one, which is small. It's only a, probably about seven, seven inches across. I'll get it close so you can see the texture of it. And I was always intimidated by all of these stitches, but now, I feel really impressed here. I'm actually being able to look at this and I can understand how it was constructed. And I'm looking at it going, oh, yeah, I know what they did here. So I feel like I'm starting to accomplish things. I can actually look at this and understand. And I think I could replicate this pattern just by looking at it now. So I feel like I'm progressing in the sh in the crochet world. Um, so that was the small one. Then I have this larger one. Now, this does have a spot on it. I have a little flower arrangement that has little red balls, and apparently it got wet, and it left a little red spot on it right here. 
So I'm going to have to work on that and get it cleaned up. But this is another one that she made, and it has kind of a a leaf edging to it. You know, it kind of, it's not round at the edges, so you can see it here. This one is gorgeous. And it's all leaves like ferns. I'm assuming that's what these are supposed to be, are ferns. So and I, I like the edging because it's almost like spider webs right there. But and I'm not good at blocking these the way she did. These have these have been washed, but other than ironed, I haven't done anything to them. I haven't blocked them the way they should be blocked, or starched them, or laid them on my carpet with sugar water. Then this last one here, and I have another one. I couldn't find it when I was looking for it. When she made a lot of these was in the 70s, and it was very popular at the time to make, like, doilies, but they were they were puffy in the center here, and they were intended to be starched really, really crisp, and the center portion was supposed to look like the brim part of a hat, and you would make these doilies, and they, like I said, they'd be really stiff, and they would look like a lacy hat, and then you would decorate them with flowers and tie a ribbon around the brim and stuff. So somewhere around the house, and I'm not sure where it's at, it's in a drawer someplace. I have one of those. Um, it's not starched as a hat, but the center is kind of like puffy and rough, ruffly in it. And so that's what that was done for. This one's a little more textured. It almost looks like little raised areas. Well, you can see it right here. And this one also has kind of a flower pattern. You can see here's leaves, and then it goes up to here where the flower is. And then it has kind of a pico, kind of a pico edging here. And then this is the center of it. So, yeah, so like I said, um, I've, I have another one somewhere around the house, and I have some little ones. I don't know what they were for. They're only about this big, and they're kind of rectangular with a point on the end, so I don't know if they were supposed to be combined with something or exactly what she was making. I found them in some of her things after she passed away and our family went through some stuff. That's when I found several of these doilies, and nobody else wanted them, and I said, please, I'll take them. Um, so that's how I acquired some, some of them were given to me for Christmas, uh, for different presents. Um, but there was a couple of them I got after she passed away. So now let's talk about acquisitions. I only have one thing in ology. Um, yeah, I only have one thing. And if you watched the knit crate video earlier this week, you'll all are ready have seen it but if you haven't and you want to watch it pause the video here and go check it out I'll put a little card right up here a little I if you click that it will take you over to it but um, this month's knit crate was like a special type of thing they sent a canvas bag that says make something today and it's good sized it's probably about 10 inches across and probably about seven or eight inches tall and it has a zipper and it's a heavyweight canvas and I have gotten one of these bags from them before uh, that had the Kitchener stitch listed on it and I get the membership box which is $24.99 a month and that includes your shipping and usually it includes two skeins of yarn but this month because it was a special introductory uh, yarn base that they have it was only one skein because it's an expensive yarn base. They retail this, I think, at $32 per skein. Um, I wouldn't spend $32 on a skein of yarn. The most I think I've, I've spent is $28. Um, but this is, it's called Knitology Sheen. And the colorway is called Titmouse, which if you're not familiar with that, um, in the U.S. we have a little bird. And it comes out and it's got all of these colors in it. It has like blues on it and it's kind of a mousy gray, grayish brown. And it has some yellow on it. And it's just a very pretty little bird. And it has like a little crest on its head. It's really, it's a cute bird. But anyway, um, that's what this is 
supposed to be the colorway was based on the theme of Titmouse. And this yarn base is 75% merino wool, 15% silk, and 10% cashmere. And there are 400 yards or 366 meters in it. Um, so because it's got silk in it, it's very soft and it's got cashmere in it. So it is like the luxury of luxury yarns. So that's why there's only one skein in here this month. And they give you a pattern book. And I really like the way they've changed their patterns. Uh, it used to be you got a little card with coupon codes and you had to download the pattern yourself. Now they're doing something different. And they've done this for the last, I think, six months or so. They send you your yarn and then they show you um, different patterns that you can make with it. They give you a knit pattern and a crochet pattern for that skein or skeins of yarn. And if you get the sock box, which is, of course, sock, they give you a knitted sock pattern. They don't have crocheted sock patterns, but they have knitted sock patterns. But they've also started doing something with, with um, hand dyers. There used to be a box, and it was called the Artisan Sock Box. And it was um, hand-dyed yarn by an independent yarn dyer. However, Knit Crate has so many subscribers that the people that were doing the, the in, these independent dyers just couldn't handle the volume of yarn they were having to, to dye. So instead, they are offering, they're highlighting each month a independent dyer, and you can actually go over to their, to Knit Crate, and you can buy their yarn through Knit Crate, and they highlight, like I said, a special one each month. So I'll show you that one. Um, I found a picture of the tip mouse. There it is, right there. So you can see what they look like and how they got the color scheme from it. So. They have um, the pattern, the crochet pattern you could make with this yarn was bird seed, which is a hat. I'm not a hat person. I think they look nice and everything, but for some reason I can't stand anything with elastic type of things around my head, like headbands or elastic bands or just even the... Even on some hats, just the ribbing on the hat, the elasticity from that gives me a headache. It's squeezing my brain. I guess I can't handle it. I don't know. It just, I can't, I can never, I just can't wear them. Um, I wish I could because it would keep my ears warm, but I can't. Um, so they gave you that pattern. And this month they also threw in two additional patterns. If you were to go to the shop and buy a second skein of yarn, they gave you a second pattern. This was called Penelope. It's crocheted, and it is a scarf and headband. Oh, that's a knitting one. I'm sorry. I said crochet. That's a knitting bonus. And the hat. I said it was crocheted. The hat is knitted. So the hat and the hat and the scarf and headband are knitted. I'm not real crazy about either of those. I like the crochet patterns in here. Here's one called Solanelle. This is for one skein. And then they also give you a second pattern that is called Honeycomb. And it's using if you were to buy a second skein. So they have that, and then their independent dyer that they are um, promoting this this month is Tactile Dactyl, which I have bought. Um, actually, I didn't buy from them. I got I got a sock kit from them uh, a while back, and I got some of the Tactile Dactyl, and it was white with teal and purple in it. So these are the two colors that she is selling this month. The Tactile Dactyl is. Now you do, to be able to buy these uh, additional yarn, you do have to be a Knit Crate member. They're not like open to the general public. Um, then they give you a couple of, they give you some information about the designer this month. So they tell you a little bit about her and different things she's designed. 
So that's always fun. And then this, this is the sock yarn from this month, which is a green. And there's the pattern, which is really, really pretty. So if I can get it without the glare. There you go. And it was called Triometry. And they give you a pattern for the sock. And they also, this one is, a, is actually a charted pattern, as well as a handwritten pattern. Sometimes it's just one or the other. But this one's both. And then they give you some interesting, they have easy listening, some of our favorite yarn-related podcasts. And so they list some um, different ones to check out. I'm not on there. Hmm. Um, imagine that. Anyway, they also have a, sh a sock pop-up shop preview. So that's kind of cool. So here are some assorted colorways for $26 each. Some of those are gorgeous. So, yeah, lots in here in their little um, information thing. And, again, they tell a little bit about the designers. They tell a little bit about the people who have dyed the yarn. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's like a little yarn magazine that comes with each with uh, each month's subscription. If you're interested in Knit Crate subscription boxes and you want to try um, at a discount, you can get your first box for 20% off if you use the coupon code KCREATIONS20, and the link is down below. Now it's time for... In our sales section this, this week, we have uh, Annie's Spring Collection. Now, if you watched on Thursday, I had a short little episode uh, Annie's is offering us a giveaway for a pattern. It is for the Corner to Corner Cardi, which is a short-sleeved cardigan. And the giveaway is only running through Thursday of this week. So it ends on the 21st of March. To enter, all you need to do is go through Annie's, and the link is down below. Check out their spring collection and leave a comment uh, down in the giveaway, um, the giveaway video telling me which pattern you liked out of all of it and you will get entered and then I will draw a winner and announce the winner on March 22nd. So um, anyway, Annie's is offering um, $3 off of every $15 that you spend. Yeah, $3 off of every $15 that you spend. So that's one to check out. That's over on Annie's. The links to all of these sales are down below. You just click. It'll take you over there. I do get a small commission from any sales, just to be transparent so you guys know. Um, I do get something out of each one, and it helps support the podcast. Blueprint, which is the old Craftsy, is offering 30% off of your order. You do need to put a coupon code. You do need to put a coupon code pot of gold. That's what you have to put in because of, of course, St. Patty's Day. So again, that's 30% off of your order. Consumer Crafts has Lion Brand Shawl in a Ball for $7.17. Create for Less is offering crochet cotton thread, which is what you make the doilies out of, uh, the number 10 size, so that's the thinner one, uh, for anywhere from $2.39 to $2.99, depending on how big of a yarn ball you buy. Hobium Yarn has, they always offer things about 40% off, but they are running a special on their La Mia Merino yarn, which is 100% wool. Um, it is Merino, uh, so it's nice and soft. And at least it says it's Merino. It says La Mia Marine, Merino, so I'm assuming it is, but the label says 100% wool. If you buy only one ball, it's $3.30, but if you buy a pack of five balls of yarn, you get them for $2.97 per yarn ball. So it's definitely cheaper to buy in bulk. Knit Picks. Knit Picks I might have to do a little shopping at. 
They are having up to 40% off of over 200 of their sock yarns. Yeah, up to 40% off over 200 sock yarns. I looked and actually saw one for $3. I might have to look a little bit more. Anyway, uh, they also have their yarn of the month, which is 20% off, and that is their City Tweed yarn. Leisure Arts has some new arrivals in their book section. Uh, some that I saw in there that I thought were really cute. In the crochet section, they had a Shrugs and Boleros uh, book. They also had one with wraps, so I thought those were kind of cute. And in the knitted section, they had a cute little book on ponchos. They had lots of other ones, too. Those are ones that just caught my eye. Uh, but they have, like I said, some new arrivals in their knit and crochet books. They do sell yarn as well, but I think you can get the prices for the yarn other places as good or better. So I tend to lean more towards sticking with what they're good at, and that's the books. Uh, Lion Brand Yarn, and this is another one that might be calling my name because it's a really good deal. They are offering 20% off of their super chunky yarn. You do need to use the coupon code super bulky 20. So it's on their super bulky yarn. And if you sign up to get their on their onto their like their email list, you get $10 off of your first order over $30. That's like 30% off. Yeah, 30% off. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I might have to do that too because $10 off of my first order of $30 or over. What happens is you sign up for their free account. So they send you emails when they have sales and things like that. And they send you a coupon code in your email. And you just apply that coupon code when you order. And then you would get your um, $10, $10 off of your first $30 order. So even if you only bought something for $30, you're going to get $10 off. So you get $30 worth of stuff for $20. That's not bad. A little shopping might be done this week, it sounds like. Yeah. There might be lots of acquisitions to look at next week. You just never know. <laughs> anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. So that is it for today's episode. Now, this week we are going to have two different additional videos. On Tuesday, I thought it would be kind of fun to look at some vintage crochet and knitting patterns. When I was going through the things from my mother's knitting machine, um, which I still have not figured out how to operate, um, I have it sort of set up. It's not as quite as of a disaster on my kitchen table. It's a good thing we don't eat there because there's just no space. There's knitting machine parts like scattered all over the table. Um, I have it set up. I've tried to run it and so far casting on all I did was create a giant knot. So um, I've been looking at the, I need to relook at the video and read the pattern book or the instruction book and see if I can figure it out. Otherwise, mom and dad might be invited over for lunch and she can give me a knitting machine lesson and maybe we can figure out what I'm doing wrong, which could be a multitude of things because there's so many little pieces and parts and I don't know what everything goes to it. I totally forgot where I was going with this. Oh, yes. Sorry, you can tell it's later at night and I'm not thinking clearly. Um, in the process of emptying out all the boxes with all the parts and pieces, I found a whole bunch of old patterns, and some of them are knitting machine patterns. They were in magazines. But then there was these, like, sample patterns that were given out, like, years and years and years ago. Some of these patterns are older than I am. I found one from 1960. I was born in 1962, so it was two years before I was born. In fact, 1960 was the year my parents got married. So, um, yeah, they could, it, it's it's quite interesting and fun to look at. Um, in some ways to see how our patterns and our styles have changed. And then in some ways, some of the patterns that I ran across was like, I really like that. I'm going to make that pattern. So um, I thought it would be kind of fun, a little trip down memory lane, so to speak. So that will be Tuesday. I'm going to be showing some of those patterns that I ran across. And then on Wednesday will be the tutorial for the linen stitch. So um, 
yeah, check out both of those and make sure you go over and enter the giveaway. Um, good luck to everybody. And I will be drawing a winner for that on Friday, which will I'll be announcing the winner for that on Friday, which will be March 22nd. So um, the giveaway runs till March 21st. So go over and get your entries in. And that's it for this week. And I will see you all later. Thanks again for watching.